Joining us via Skype from Central Florida is Marshall Polston. He's the Christian college student suspended from Rollins College for challenging his Muslim professor. And Marshall, we thank you for joining us. So tell me uh, what you feel was the reason you were suspended. What happened? Well, first of all, Gary, thank you so much for having me on CBN. It's a real honor to be here because you all do uh, great work. Uh, first of all, let, let's just make this clear about what this is. This is an infringement upon my First Amendment rights, including freedom of speech and uh, religion. And it's really bothersome that this is happening in a place of higher learning, because that's supposed to be where we're safe, uh, where we can talk about these things. Uh, but apparently that's not the case if you're a Christian in this country. Uh, essentially what happened is there was uh, this professor who uh, is a Muslim, and that's fine. I have lots of Muslim friends. And uh, in, in fact, um, you know, I've, I've been to the Middle East many times helping Muslim refugees, helping Christian refugees, lots of different groups of people. But the thing that really struck a chord with me the first day is she said that the crucifixion of Jesus was probably didn't happen. And then essentially also said that uh, the disciples of Jesus did not believe he was God. Now, if you ask any scholar like Bart Ehrman, Bart Ehrman's even an atheist, okay? And, and there are a lot of Christians that debate with him. But the one thing he'll tell you is that the crucifixion happened and that the disciples believed Jesus was God. Well, Marshall, was Professor Zafari's lecture discussing what Muslims believe, or did she present it as the truth? Well, it was a secular course. All courses at Rollins are secular, and she was not presenting it as what Muslims believe, uh, because it was actually a course called Middle Eastern Humanities, and it covers basically everything from towards the end of uh, classical antiquity until today. And of course, a large focus of that is Islam, but the period she was talking about is from the first to the fourth century. So no, it was uh, secular uh, that she was trying to present it as. And, and I understand there was a Muslim student who discussed his views of Sharia law. What did he say and how did the professor respond to that? Well, that was really surprising to me because after the first class, um, essentially I was pulled into the dean's office. They told me to be quiet, not say anything, which I did for a couple of weeks. But then there was this really bothersome comment, and th there was a student uh, who was talking in a discussion about Sharia law, and he was a conservative Muslim, and he essentially said that um, it's okay to uh, sort of cut off or decapitate people's hands, and he just started going off on, on this uh, little rant about how uh, you can't uh, interpret the Quran any other way than literally, and uh, it was just really disturbing. So I ended up emailing the professor, and um, ultimately, because of that email, um, I got suspended. And then finally, last week, um, on Thursday, the professor did something which I don't think was the right thing to do. She uh, ended up filing a false police report against me. I have footage of myself in a restaurant very close to my house, which is about an hour away from the school, at the exact same time she says I was at the school. And it's really frustrating how I this whole process went down. And, um, you know, I don't know what else there is to do other than come to people like you who are able to tell the story. And I'm grateful that you were allowed me to do that. So you challenged your professor and the, the college said that uh, the, the challenge that you had uh, basically constituted, was it a threat or a disruption to the class? You know, there, the, there's the only time I spoke out was uh, that first day of class. Um, the, the, as far as the email goes, uh, it's public now. You can find it. I believe the College Fix has it out there. You can uh, look at their website. It's listed everything in the email. But uh, all I said was that I thought it was wrong that she let this student uh, uh, do or, or say what, what they said because I thought it was really reprehensible uh, without <laughs> you know telling at least the dean about it. But yet I'm suspended. Um, and I also said that I thought it was uh, important that she teach things factually in the class. And I said that if she's not going to do that, she shouldn't be teaching at the school. Now, none of that is wrong to say, and none of that is a threat, and none of that is is uh, hate speech. So if people want to review the email, again, it's on the college fix. They can look at it. Uh, and uh, it was really reprehensible that I was shut down for voicing my opinion. You had a disciplinary hearing with college administrators. What was their attitude in that meeting? Was there any concern or discussion of the fact that you are a straight A student and received a 52 on your paper with this professor? Well, there was really no concern. In fact, it was quite the opposite. Now, um, I mean, the first words that they said when I came into the meeting 
I asked them, I said, did you have the video feed from the building? Because there's cameras all around the building. I said, do you have the video feed from this building where the professor says I was? And they told me the first words were, unfortunately. And they said, unfortunately, uh, we did not see you in the video feed, but we're still reviewing it. So <laughs> that told me everything I needed to know about the rest of the, the hearing. Towards the end of it, I actually got a good feeling. I think that they realized maybe that they, they had made a mistake. And when I say they, I'm not referencing the entire school because nothing is a monolith. But there are certainly groups, I think, within every uh, organization in academia today in America that are out on a witch hunt, in, in my opinion, against uh, uh, Christian students like me. And it's such a shame that uh, in, in this particular instance, neither their actions towards me or the fact that they hired this professor meets up to the uh, integrity and values of the school. Okay, you're talking about a video feed. I just want our viewers to uh, know that this was apparently uh, some allegations from the f professor stating that you were uh, stalking her on a certain evening or a certain date. She went to the police apparently seeking protection because she felt threatened. Did you ever threaten her physically? You know, I never threatened her physically. And it's really amazing that when I got to the school, they had five police officers there. They had two uh, investigators, they had two, or two detectives, and uh, they had campus security everywhere. Uh, and, and nothing for the young man who said that he thought it was okay to, you know, chop off hands. But, that, you know, again, obviously in this climate, it seems, in this climate, it seems very <laughs> uh, inadequate uh, to just present the evidence. You, you, you can't win with them. It's, it's totally impossible. Well, now, an associate dean said that she talked to you about the email you sent to Professor Zafari, and she felt uncomfortable by your continued reference to guns. What's that all about, Marshall? What did you say about guns? Well, I said absolutely nothing about guns. I never mentioned it uh, once as far as uh, I'm concerned in her class, never mentioned it to her in an email, never talked to her about guns at all. That's a total fabrication and a lie. Uh, an another thing that is worth noting here is her, her character. And I think she's brought up some false accusations about me, and I think it's important to bring up some of her history, which people may or may not know about. There are court documents, uh, and she was sued a number of years ago, uh, but she and her husband, which it is believed she was a, a second wife to, were uh, under investigation at one point by both private investigators and the FBI. Uh, she uh, and her husband, uh, this Dr. Gawaji, if you can uh, read the reports, I don't know if you have, were uh, actually working together to donate thousands of dollars to groups like Mercy International, uh, which funded terrorist organizations, uh, and they have links to groups like Al-Qaeda. Uh, additionally, she has worked tirelessly to uh, fundraise for people like we're talking, uh, uh, one of them was a co-conspirator, an unindicted co-conspirator to the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. And there's just a, a, a long train of statements that are sworn statements and depositions. There are financial records, everything, you name it, that this woman has a history of as far as links to radical Islamic groups. And it's very disturbing that Rollins would have a professor like this working at their university and work to defend such an individual. Well, we'll have those in the website article. People can look for themselves. And so what do you want to see happen here, Marshall? Well, I would like to see, number one, uh, myself be unsuspended and for the uh, you know internal uh, charges against me to be dropped because I think that they have no base, they have no foundation. Uh, as far as the professor goes, that's obviously up to the school. Uh, I'm going to leave it to them to, to make what they think is the best decision. But if, if I were them, I would probably not have hired her in the first place. Do you want to see her dismissed? I want to see her dismissed, absolutely. Um, and that's something that we're asking. And, and really, an additional thing that I would add to this is look at your professors before you hire them, because there was this was all out in the open. Her connections to these organizations, her history, this was all something they should have known before. And I guess they just didn't do due diligence. That being said, Rollins is a great school. I love it. And I'd like to continue there. But I can't if it's this sort of environment continues where I'm constantly 
uh, you know, <laughs> harassed by this professor and where she continues to spread lies about me. Well, finally, I want to know about your faith. Uh, you're obviously a defender of Christianity. How has all of this affected your faith? Well, it's actually strengthened my faith because every day I wake up and I'll always read uh, the Bible. I always love Paul's letters, so I'll probably uh, wake up and read something out of Paul's letters. He strengthens me and with his encouragement because of uh, the persecution that, that he went through. But I would say, uh, you know, that I've, uh, my Christian faith has helped me in service to other people. I've been to the Middle East, whether it's uh, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq. I lived in Iraq for a short time, helping refugees uh, and, and spreading uh, God's love through my actions towards these people. And um, I, I love all people. I love Muslims. I love Christians. And to me, the most important thing in life is, is service to uh, my country, my community, and to my world, and, and to let the light of Jesus shine through me. Okay, Marshall Polston, thanks for joining us. Keep us informed. Yep, thank you very much for having me. It's an honor.